United States Supreme Court ruled that a controversial drug used in executions does not violate the Constitution. The vote was five to four. Jan Crawford reports this lethal injection case caused one justice to pull out a poison pen. The justices took up the case in the wake of a botched execution in Oklahoma, where a convicted killer writhed and moaned in the 43 minutes it took him to die. In his majority opinion, Justice Samuel Alito said there was no evidence the drug at issue entails a substantial risk of severe pain, noting the Oklahoma prisoner's IV had been improperly placed. Alito said 12 executions using the same drug protocol went off without any significant problems. But the justices quickly moved beyond that narrow issue to a contentious debate about the future of the death penalty. Justice Stephen Breyer, joined by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, used the case to urge the court to reconsider its rulings allowing capital punishment, writing for the first time, I believe it is highly likely that the death penalty violates the Eighth Amendment, prohibiting cruel and unusual punishment. He added the death penalty was unreliable and arbitrary, saying there is evidence indicating that courts sentence to death individuals who may well be actually innocent. Fordham Law School professor Deborah Denno said Breyer was seeking to influence the national debate. If you have a justice making that large a claim in a key death penalty case, then that's going to add to the debate. It's going to add to the, con to the conversation in a potentially very critical way. The dissent triggered a sharp response from Justice Antonin Scalia, who said it was full of internal contradictions and, it must be said, gobbledygook that revealed an elitist, let them eat cake obliviousness to the concerns of everyday Americans. Now, the court has never suggested the death penalty is categorically unconstitutional. And, Scott, there certainly aren't five votes on this court to strike it down now. Jan, I want to ask you about another important action that came out of the court today. The Supreme Court blocked Texas from enforcing its new restrictions on abortion clinics. What does that mean, and what's going to happen next? Right, so abortion rights uh, groups had argued that those regulations in Texas would make about half of the state's 19 abortion clinics closed because they would essentially have to be run like surgical centers. So today's order will keep all of those clinics open while the justices decide if they're going to hear this case. If they do, our case would be in the fall. It would be the most major abortion case in decades, and Scott, it would come right in the middle of a presidential campaign. Jan Crawford at the Supreme Court for us tonight. Jan, thank you very much. In another